Gospel singer John P. Key's early years in the music industry were anything but angelic. In the early 1980s, Key, then 18, found himself entangled in the fast life of drugs and easy money, veering away from a promising career as a keyboardist and background singer for some of the hottest groups of that era. Instead, he found himself dealing drugs at a local grocery store in his hometown in North Carolina, selling everything but groceries. The turning point in Key's life came with the tragic death of his best friend, who was killed in a $40 drug deal gone wrong. Also now, make your videos unforgettable with our professional editing services. Elevate your content today. Check the link below for more info. This heart-wrenching incident convinced Key that his true gift, the gift of song, was God-given and meant for his service. This revelation set him on a new path, one dedicated to using his talents for a higher purpose. 15 years later, with 11 successful albums, a Grammy nomination, and 12 stellar awards to his name, Key reflects on his journey with a sense of fulfillment and understanding. Everything that happened in my life was a lesson that needed to be learned, Key says. The hard knocks kind of made me, and they made me appreciate what I went through, what I took advantage of, and the things I took for granted. It certainly caused this little country boy to grow up. I paid those old debts and walked away from that lifestyle. It's no surprise that John P. Key ultimately used gospel music to realign his life. Growing up in North Carolina, gospel music was a staple in his household, where he was the last of six boys in a family of 16 children. Key's father had a deep love for gospel music and encouraged his children, all of whom could sing, to fill the home with spirituals. You were born to do that, and if you didn't, you couldn't get anybody's attention, especially daddy's, Key recalls, and everybody wanted daddy's attention. Key's intelligence and musical talent thrust him into the fast life prematurely. A musical prodigy, he graduated from the North Carolina School of the Arts at just 14 and began studying at Yuba College in California. At Yuba, he was labeled a genius for his mastery of the piano, flute, and drums. His powerful voice also set him apart, and by the age of 16, he was invited to tour with the R&B group Cameo, jazz master Donald Byrd, and superstar songstress Phyllis Hyman. However, it was during these tours that Key got sidetracked, caught up in the world of drugs and nightlife. I was so caught up in the game and it backfired on me, Key admits. I had that look like I was old when I was really a baby. I was a spoiled brat. I could call down from my room to a club and get any kind of money that I wanted for what I did. I took advantage of it and I loved it. It was rewarding, and I really had my mind on my craft. But there was the sidetrack part, the clubs, the exposure. I was in that environment at an early age, and I got caught up. In 1980, at the age of 22, Key left California and the club scene for North Carolina, where he worked with the Miss Black Universe pageant. However, the job wasn't enough to keep him from engaging in less reputable activities. It was a decent little job, but it happened once a year, he explains, there was a lot of idle time and really nothing to do. Key also acknowledges that greed played a significant role in his descent into using and selling cocaine from a small grocery store in his town. In California, there was so much money to be made. He says, when I moved back east, it was a lifestyle change. I couldn't get work, so I got the lifestyle I was accustomed to in the street. His fast life came to a jarring halt on June 7th, 1981, when he witnessed his best friend being gunned down over a tape $40 deal gone bad, right next to the grocery store where Key sold cocaine. It was a wake-up call, Key reflects. I realized I had never seen a drug dealer retire, never saw them accomplish anything. I just woke up and recognized that I couldn't go out like that. Immediately, Key started playing for a local church choir. In 1985, he became the first artist to record lead vocals on two selections for the Gospel Music Workshop of America's annual mass choir recording. His gospel career truly took off when he penned and recorded Jesus Lives in Me for gospel giant Edwin Hawkins, which earned him enough money to make a demo. With the demo, Key secured a record deal in 1987 and released his debut album, Wait on Him, with the New Life Community Choir. Since 1989, Key has consistently released at least one album, sometimes two, every year, earning the gospel industry's highest honors for his unique blend of hip-hop in his funky, up-tempo songs. When he's not singing, Key is focused on his plans to build a new church in his hometown, just blocks away from the grocery store, where he once did the devil's work. They say you're famous for 15 John minutes. Key. 
Born he says, John Prince Key that church on June 4th, 1962, in Durham, North Carolina, is one of the most influential figures in contemporary gospel music. Growing up as the youngest of six boys in a family of 16 children, Key's life was infused with the rich traditions of gospel music from an early age. His father, an avid lover of gospel music, encouraged all his children to sing, creating an environment where music and spirituality were intertwined. Pastor John P. Key, celebrated for his gospel music and inspiring ministry, has also faced significant personal challenges. During the early years of his career, Key was swept up in the temptations that often accompany the fast-paced life of a touring musician. His extraordinary talent as a keyboardist and vocalist opened doors to tour with famous artists like Cameo, Donald Byrd, and Phyllis Hyman. However, these opportunities also exposed him to a lifestyle that included drugs, partying, and moral compromises. By the time Key was in his early 20s, he had become deeply involved in the drug scene. His musical career took a backseat as he engaged in drug use and eventually started dealing drugs from a local grocery store in his hometown of Durham, North Carolina. This period of his life was marked by reckless behavior and a series of poor decisions that would later haunt him, scandals and personal struggles. John P. Key's entanglement with drugs led to a series of scandals that marred his early career. His involvement in illegal activities and the company he kept during this time placed him on a dangerous path. The most significant scandal occurred when Key witnessed the murder of his best friend over a $40 drug deal gone wrong. This tragic event became a turning point in his life, forcing him to confront the destructive path he was on and prompting a reevaluation of his life choices. Despite his efforts to distance himself from his past, Key's reputation was tarnished by his earlier actions. His journey to redemption was not an easy one. He faced skepticism and judgment from both the public and the church community. Many found it difficult to reconcile the image of the troubled young man involved in drugs with the gospel singer who now preached about faith and redemption, illness and health struggles. In addition to his personal and professional challenges, John P. Key has also faced significant health struggles. He has been open about his battle with diabetes, a chronic condition that requires careful management. Living with diabetes has necessitated significant lifestyle changes, including dietary adjustments and regular medical care. Key's health issues have been a constant reminder of the consequences of his earlier lifestyle and the importance of self-care. Managing diabetes while maintaining a demanding career in music and ministry has been challenging. Key has had to balance his rigorous schedule of recording, performing, and preaching with the need to monitor his health constantly. Despite these challenges, he has remained committed to his work, using his experiences to inspire others facing similar struggles. Relationships and Personal Life John P. Key's personal life has also been marked by a series of tumultuous relationships and public scrutiny. His early relationships were often complicated by his lifestyle and the pressures of his career. Key has spoken about the difficulty of maintaining healthy relationships while dealing with the temptations and challenges of the music industry. One of the most notable relationships in Key's life was with his first wife, Felice Sampson. The couple's marriage faced significant challenges due to Key's past and his ongoing struggles. Despite their efforts to make the relationship work, they eventually divorced, a decision that was both painful and necessary for both parties. The dissolution of his marriage was a significant personal setback for Key, but it also served as a catalyst for further personal growth and reflection. Despite his humble beginnings, Key's prodigious musical talent became evident early on. By the age of 14, he had graduated from the North Carolina School of the Arts, a remarkable achievement that underscored his exceptional abilities. His education continued at Yuba College in California, where he further honed his skills in piano, flute, and drums, earning the label of genius from his peers and instructors. His vocal prowess also did not go unnoticed, leading to early opportunities to tour with renowned artists, such as Cameo, Donald Byrd, and Phyllis Hyman. Key's early exposure to the music industry, particularly through his tours with established artists, significantly influenced his career trajectory. Working alongside Cameo, a funk band famous in the late 70s and 80s, Key experienced firsthand the demands and thrills of life on the road.